Today is May 22nd, the eve of Pentecost, and May 22nd is also the feast day of St. Rita of Kasha, an Augustinian nun from the 14th century. She is the patroness of impossible causes and hopeless circumstances because of her difficult and disappointing life. Her life was one of struggles and overcoming difficulties, and in so living, she became God's instrument to do remarkable works, not only while she lived, but now also as a saint in heaven whose intercession is sought by the laity for their own seemingly impossible and hopeless situations. St. Rita was born Margarita Lotti in Roccaparena, Italy, in 1381. There's an interesting story from her infancy. It goes like this. The day after her baptism, which would have been a, within a week of her birth, Rita was surrounded by a swarm of white bees which went in and out of her mouth without hurting her. Rather than being alar alarmed, her family believed she was marked to be virtuous and devoted to God. At an early age, St. Rita begged her parents to allow her to enter a convent, but was instead arranged to be married to a rather wicked man named Paolo Mancini. Young Rita became a wife and mother at an age that, well, I have to describe rather delicately here. She was six years younger than the typical modern college freshman, we'll say. Anyway. One of her great struggles in life was that her husband was a man with a wicked temper. In anger, he often bestowed various evils verbally on his wife as well as materially. He was also known to pursue other women and had a great many adversaries. But his story does not end on a wicked note because Rita's influence over him eventually led him to be a better man. She was a critical instrument used by God for his interior conversion. He even renounced a family feud between the Mancinis and another rival family. Unfortunately, the feud between the other family and Kasha family grew turbulent, and one of Paolo's allies betrayed and, well, sent him to meet our Lord in his judgment. Rita married Paolo in obedience to her parents, despite the convent being the deepest desire, desire she had. She put aside her own desires of the deepest kind, the most holy kind, in obedience to her parents. It's fascinating. She had two sons also whom she loved deeply. St. Rita mourned her husband's death and prayed intercessory prayers for his soul with great earnest. I hope you do the same in your lives as well. Rita's two young sons, in keeping with the vice of the day, spoke of justice and getting even. She did all she could to guide her children into forgiveness, but was unable to dissuade them from their evil intentions. Prayer was her only hope. She pleaded with God that he would prevent the evil swelling up in their hearts or to allow her sons to die before they had the chance to commit a mortal sin or to quell that evil growing in them. Because if they, you know, died in a state of mortal sin, they would go to Gehenna. God granted her prayers. Both of her sons became afflicted and went to their judgment, in as far as any mortal man can tell, in a state of grace. God intervened and prevented them from following the evil path of their father. After their passing, St. Rita was all alone in the world and sought again to enter the convent, as had been her desire from childhood. She was turned away because of her family's association with the chaos in the secular world. Some of the sisters living in the convent were family relations of the men who were responsible for bringing down St. Rita's husband. To maintain peace in the convent, she was denied entry. St. Rita, again facing crushing disappointment and yet another impossible situation, had recourse to prayer and the intercession of the saints. St. Rita's sincerity and spirit of charity and forgiveness prevailed, and she was eventually granted entry into the convent. She became known as a holy and prayerful nun, often meditating on the sufferings of the crucified Christ. Remember, she is the patron saint of impossible causes. Here is another miraculous account from her life. One day, while praying before a crucifix, St. Rita received a visible wound on her forehead. This was a mystical yet visible mark, a stigmata, of our Lord's wounds from the crown of thorns, symbolizing St. Rita's unity with Christ and his sufferings. She also enjoyed many mystical experiences with Christ during the 40 years she lived in the convent. She died on May 22nd when she was in her 70s, in the year 1471. As St. Rita certainly had a difficult life, but her heartbreaking circumstances drove her to prayer and helped her to become a holy woman. She began her work of intercession for sinners while she lived, starting with those closest to her heart. Through her love and prayer, she won the grace of conversion for her husband and both of her sons. 
Even though her life was full of sorrows and disappointments, Rita was consoled by closely uniting herself with the sufferings of Christ, and he did not abandon her. Rather, he granted her profound and intimate graces. Now a saint in heaven, St. Rita is the patron of impossible causes, loneliness, nuptial difficulties, widows, and those with material afflictions. She is also one of the church's incorruptible saints. Her body is now venerated at the Basilica named for her in Kasha, Italy. As I said before, her passing is also an interesting story. An old and revered tradition rec records that the bells of the convent immediately began to peal unaided by human hands, calling the people of Kasha to the doors of the convent and announcing the triumphant completion of a life faithfully lived. The nuns prepared her for burial and placed her in a simple wooden coffin. A carpenter who had been partially paralyzed voiced the sentiment of many others when he spoke of the beautiful life of this humble nun in bringing lasting peace to the people of Kasha. If only I were well, he said, I would have prepared a place more worthy of you. With those words he was restored. Rita's first miracle was performed. The carpenter was then able to fashion the elaborate and richly decorated coffin, which would hold Rita's body for several centuries, but she was never buried in it. So many people came to look upon the gentle face of the peacemaker of Kasha that her burial had to be delayed, and with that it became clear that something exceptional was occurring as her body seemed to be free from nature's usual recourse. It is still incorrupt today, now in a glass-enclosed coffin in the Basilica of Kasha. So as you get ready for Pentecost today, the, on this, the vigil of Pentecost, I hope you take St. Rita's example and see how you can apply it in your life. After all, we do live in exceptionally difficult times for many people. We see this every day. We see it in the headlines. We see it, you know, in our everyday real lives. We see people that we know and love very dearly having a very difficult time in these days. So keep St. Rita in your heart and keep St. Rita's um, example in your in the forefront of your mind in these days, and if you if you need, pray a novena for her intercession for someone who needs it. Again, I hope you found this helpful. On your screen for the remainder of this video will be two different prayers for Saint Rita. One will be the novena prayer, and the other will be an intercessory prayer to request her intercession in your life or the life of someone else. So I hope you find these useful. Feel free to pause these. And write these down if you need. Have a blessed Saturday. Ave Maria.